Question 3 from the 2023 Higher Physics Exam from the SQA, from Section 2. During a practice session for a Grand Prix, two Formula 1 cars collide in the pit lane and car X has a mass of 760 kilograms and is travelling at 12 metres per second. You can see that in the diagram. Car Y has a mass of 840 kilograms and is travelling at 4 metres per second, once again shown in the diagram. The cars collide and move off separately. Car Y moves off with a velocity of 8.5 metres per second. And we have to calculate for three marks the, uh, the velocity of car X immediately after the collision. This is a conservation of momentum problem. We know that momentum can be calculated by the mass of the object times the velocity of it. And remember also that where we have got momentum is a vector quantity so we have to take into consideration the direction of what is happening okay in this type of problem you simply draw out the diagram of before and after there's a diagram there and this part here is going to be before so that will be the before part and you're going to have the after part after the dotted line this is what's going to happen after so once you've got, done your little sketch, you can put in the numbers and what's happening. You know that this car here, car X, is going to be moving at 12 metres per second before the collision. And it's got a mass of 760 kilograms. We know that car Y is going to be moving at 4 metres per second before the collision. And that's got a mass of 840 kilograms. And likewise, after the collision, we don't know the speed or the velocity of this, ca this car here, but we do know its mass, 760 kilograms. We don't know the direction it's going, but we take it for granted it's going to the right, and the maths should help us out in that one. The car Y is going to be moving away with a velocity of 8.5 metres per second to the right, and it's got the same mass, presuming nothing falls off it. So what we have to do then is work out the total momentum before. So the total momentum before the collision is just simply going to be 760 times 12. Add on the momentum of this car here, 840 uh, times 4. And that's going to be the total momentum after the collision. Do that in your calculator and you get an answer of 12,480 units of momentum. We'll just put them in, kg, m, s, minus 1. So we've now got the total momentum before the collision. After the collision, we don't know V, so we have to put down the expression 760V. That's going to be the momentum of this car X afterwards. And we know the momentum of this one, we've got to add it on, is going to be simply 840 times 8.5. So the total momentum afterwards is going to be 760V plus the value of this quantity here, which turns out to be 7140. And once again, the units are kilogram meters per second. So that's the situation we've got. And now we use our conservation momentum, provided there's no external forces taking place. We know that the total momentum afterwards, that's going to be this part in here, total momentum afterwards, has got to equal to total momentum before, conservation momentum. So we're going to have 760V plus 7140, and that's got to be equal to total momentum before, which is 1240. So we've got a simple little equation to do then, and all we have to do is say that 760 V is going to equal to 12480, take away the 7140, and we can make up a little equation from that then, that V is going to be equal to this answer here, which turns out to be, we've just calculated your calculator, 12480. Take away 7,140, and we're going to divide that by 760. And that gives us a velocity of the car afterwards to be 7.03 in our calculator, but that comes down to be 7.0 metres per second. Notice it's plus, which means it's correct, it's going from left to right. So now we have got the actual velocity of car uh, X after the collision, 7 metres per second. Question 3 continued, part B. Show by calculation that the collision is inelastic. 
to show means you use your data to show that this is inelastic. And what does that mean? The inelastic collision means that the momentum is conserved. Well, that's done in the previous one. But the big deciding factor here is that kinetic energy is lost. So we have to work out the kinetic energy before. And we know the kinetic energy formula is Ek is a half mv squared. And we also know that kinetic energy is a scalar quantity, which means we just have to simply add up all the kinetic energy before and compare it to all the kinetic energy afterwards. We don't have to take into consideration the direction. But in this particular problem, all the cars are going in one direction anyway. Always pays you to draw the diagram of what's happening. There's the diagram here. And we know that kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So all we have to do is for each of those cars, work out the kinetic energy. So one half, this one here is going to be one half times 760 times 12 squared. Put that in a bracket. Add on the kinetic energy of this one, which is the same formula. One half times the mass, 840 times, and it's going to be 4 squared. Now, we add up that, we get the total kinetic energy before. I'll just write total kinetic energy before. It's going to be equal to 61,440 joules. So that's the kinetic energy before. Kinetic energy afterwards, just take your time and do the same thing again. One half times 760 times 7 squared this time. And then you add on the kinetic energy for this one. One half times 840 times 8.5 squared and if you do that in your calculator you end up with a kinetic energy total kinetic energy afterwards equal to 448,000 on your calculator uh, 965 joules so you can see right away that we've lost kinetic energy and uh, therefore the total kinetic energy afterwards does not equal the total kinetic energy before. You have lost kinetic energy, you've lost Ek, and that implies that the collision is inelastic. And that's us proven that particular problem. Question 3, part C. During the collision, the car is in contact for 0 0.82 seconds. Calculate the magnitude of the average force of car X exerts on Y. This is a change of momentum equal to an impulse question. Remember what we have? We've got change of momentum, delta P, is got to equal to the impulse, FT. In other words, we have MV minus MU. Change of momentum is always equal to the impulse. So if we can find the change of momentum of car Y, we will be able to find the impulse given to car Y over that, uh, but it'll be the exact same as the change of momentum. And therefore we can work out what the average force experienced by it. Okay, we go back to our diagram again. Always have that diagram ready. Give a quick sketch out of it. And this time we're going to concentrate on car Y. This is car X here, and this is car Y here car X and car Y. We're only looking at car Y in this particular situation and we know already that it's going to be travelling with 4 metres per second and it's got a mass of 840 kilograms. We really easily can work out its momentum before. So the momentum of this car Y before is going to be equal to 840 times the 4. We know that and it's going to be giving you a value of a 3360. Kilogram meters per second. Now we go to car Y after the collision, and we know it's going to be traveling at 8.5 meters per second, and it's got the mass of 840. Nothing wrong with the mass, mass stays the same there. So we can work out the momentum after the collision, and it's going to be equal to uh, 840 times 8.5. So you can see it's going to be an increase in the car wise momentum it's now going to be 7140 kilogram meters per second to minus one so the change of momentum delta p of this situation of car y is going to be the momentum uh, after take away the momentum b4 so that's going to be 7140 take away 3360 and that's going to give us the change in momentum. And the change in momentum is going to be 3780. 3780 kilogram meter per
per second. Now, the change of momentum is going to be exactly the same as the impulse. You can't have a change of momentum without an impulse. And you can't have an impulse without a change of momentum. So this change of momentum, in fact, equals the impulse. And the impulse is equal to FT, which must be exactly equal to the change of momentum, 3780. Oh. And we'll change units for this one to newton seconds, because that's how impulse is measured. So we know the cars were in contact for 0 0.82 seconds. So the average force times 0 0.82 has got to be equal to 3780. And therefore, if we rearrange, we can get with the average force, which was given to that car Y, is going to be 3780 uh, divided by 0 0.82. If we put the units in, we know that impulse is newton seconds, and we know the time is in seconds, and therefore you're going to get the average force is going to be measured in newtons. And if you calculate that, you get an answer of 41 so 4610 newtons is the average force. We get bonus one here. Why do we call it the average force? Well, during the course of a collision, we know that the force will change during the collision. And therefore, we've got to take the average of this. And that's what the force here measures. So the average force uh, given to uh, the, the given to car Y by car X is 4610 newtons to provide that impulse to give it that change of momentum. Question 3 continued, part D. One safety feature on Formula 1 racetrack is the use of tyre walls on bends. Tyre walls are designed to protect the driver in the event of their car leaving the track. And for two marks you have to explain how the tyre wall protects the, dive, the driver. This is another case of change of momentum and impulse. We have the car, which is going to have a certain uh, momentum. It's going to have, say, momentum B4 equal to MV. And V will be the speed in which the car is going into the wall. Now, presumably the car is brought to a halt. The momentum afterwards is going to be equal to zero. So therefore, the change of momentum, delta P, is equal to momentum afterwards minus momentum before which is going to give us zero minus mv so the change of momentum is equal to minus mv so that really means that for that car to come to a stop it must have mv of its momentum taken away from it but without a change of momentum you well with a change of momentum you always have an impulse and the impulse is provided by the force which is given by the tyre wall. So that tyre wall is going to give an impulse of the value of FT, which is going to be exactly equal to the change of momentum MV. So we can write down then that FT is equal to minus MV, or to just say the, the magnitude or the size of it, just taking the size into consideration, the impulse FT is equal to MV. We know it's minus because the impulse acts in the opposite direction where the car is in motion. Now, if we take a close look at that then, we can see that we've got various options. The momentum is going to stay the same. The change of momentum is going to stay exactly the same. What can change is the force given by the tyre wall and the time of contact, the time in which the collision took place. And you've got options here. You can have the following situation. You can have MV and you can have uh, a number like a small force over a big time. Or you can have a big force over a small collision time. Now the object of the tyre wall is to reduce the impulse force to a level of safety so that the force is not too big to, to actually damage the driver's bones and body. So the one you choose is this one here, a small force over a longer time. And that's the clue about the tyre wall, because the tyre wall is going to crush in and as the tyre wall crushes in, then it's going to increase the time of contact. It's going to increase the time of contact. Which means the impulse is going to be, in fact, the impulse is always going to be the same as the change of momentum. That doesn't change. But in this case here, the time of contact, if you make that long enough, it will make the force number small. Therefore, you're going to have a smaller force implies smaller force applied to the car to bring it to stop. And this comes into really everyday life then. You try to make your 
collision as long as possible. Sounds daft, but that's really what it is. And it's all due to this equation here. Impulse equals the change of momentum. Your momentum will always be the same. Uh, if you go at a certain speed and are brought to a halt, it's the combination of force and time that can change. So if you have a very short collision, you're going to have a big force, and that's not recommended. But if you stretch out the collision, like the rubber tires squashing up, you're going to have a small, you're going to have a big time, and you're going to have a small force. So that's the reason why the tire walls protect the driver. <laughs>